this while you're talking. Okay, so now we're recording. So I just want to capture what you're saying and all of this because, yes, please continue. My memory is fine, but I'm trying to operate. Yeah, you should be, I, I appreciate you being humble, you know, but you're, you're trying to operate on a superhuman level. And so you need, uh, you know, cyborg capabilities. And uh, that's what this technology is for. Yeah, that's, ba that's basically it is that I, it's, you know, I could, you know, like, like many of us do, you know, collect all of this information in my brain. But again, that's siloed away from the rest of society. I want everything that is in my experience to be in everybody's experience, in the collective consciousness of experience, so then anybody can process that information and not just me. You get what I'm saying? Okay, well, that's great. Let's stay focused on... Um I wanted to hear a response from what you saw in the video. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So what I saw in the video is I saw that you have a very specific type of solution that you think, you know, is a winning solution, so to speak, in terms of bringing together these different pieces, you know, the live rocks, the fin fish, the... This, the seaweed. By the way, I just had um, that seaweed twice in the last week for the first time in a while. You know, I got it. I got a little seaweed package of Publix that I used to have more regularly. Hadn't had in a while, so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but anyway, the, um, the 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 way that I see it, if you want to translate what you were doing there into the framework of what we have is that I see that you can start seeding uh, a channel built around, you know, the information that you're focusing on. So let's call it, what do you, what, what do you, let, let's, let's use a simple the term. Agriculture Institute. Yeah, but it's more of like, what's the issue? So the issue is more like ocean colonization. Is that the word that you're using or something along those lines? Um, I think the, there's different terms out there. There's, there's like the blue frontier, the blue revolution. Um, those are terms that are used to describe like this major shift, like the green revolution yeah. was in agriculture, you know, and that we're, we're kind of turning to the ocean for resources and, uh, yeah. Okay. You know, and all these so, kinds of ways. so yeah, perfect. So let's say the blue revolution. So let's say that right now, Uniting for Action does not have a Blue Revolution channel, right? Which it doesn't. And so let's say that you're like, you know, this is the area that I care about. I'm going to be the first one that's going to start camping out in the Blue Revolution channel. I'm going to start adding some of the experts that I know. I'm going to start adding some of the nonprofits that I know. I'm going to start to share some of the solutions that I'm thinking about. And I'm going to start to, you know, send out some posts on Facebook to some other people that I know that are interested in this. And I'm going to start to, you know, grassroots start to develop this channel. You know, and as other, as, as, as other people start to show up at the channel, other nonprofits show up, other corporations show up that want to be a part of a collective solution. So again, it's all about collective solutions and specific solutions, right? And so basically, you know, the channel is where you and the others are going to kind of talk about these global solutions with these global experts that are, you know, picking up on things. And then maybe there's some, you know, national renowned or international re renowned experts that really like your solution and they start to, you know, present it or follow it or post it or whatever. And it's basically, you know, the competition of ideas of solutions along with all the potential stakeholders that can implement a solution. So it's almost kind of like the competition aspect that you're in, right? It's like you've got the judges that, like they said in the video, like, you know, s several, if not all of them, are potential investors in these types of things. So again, it's the collection place for all the investors, all the experts, all the stakeholders, all the solution providers to be able to kind of work things out in some kind of process and I'm only proposing like a rudimentary process and let's just imagine that this rudimentary process is nothing like what the actual process will look like that we're going to you know have experts show up that are going to guide us through a more you know established rigorous process but whatever the process is 
that you and the others are working collectively to develop collective solutions and your solution that you're proposing gets to compete in that arena and gets to potentially you know win or get funded or whatever it looks like but you're really helping to model you know what the whole system can do as a framework based on the specific issue area that you're interested in and that you're willing to you know help develop some energy around is that really clear yeah that's really clear i um I wasn't sure how, you know, I would be able to fit in, like, as an individual, as well as, like, you know, like, the organization, the thing that I'm trying to build personally. But I feel like if you have a Blue Revolution channel, then I could bring together business leaders and, you know, and like, like you say, you'd be, you'd be providing this platform and other, you know, attractions to bring in the people, the investors, the whatever, like, you know, if people, all they have is labor, I want to be able to provide um, projects. Like, I think Hive is, is going to be a big project where people are going to be able to, like, all collaborate because it's software, right? So we could, like, work remotely and make something tangible. Yep. But with the Blue Revolution stuff, um, I really want to be able to, like, make things. Like, I want to make an artificial reef first. But there's uh, the floating island. There's like a whole mariculture production, like sustainable mariculture production in Florida with polycultures. You know, like that's where that got into because I was trying to distill this like greater vision of this greater, you know, floating island micronation, you know, this, these bigger concepts down into something that I could pitch to some investors, you know. So it was like, yep. we're going to grow fish. We could sell fish. Like we're going to grow these corals and this is how much the corals cost. So it was already like even as many things as I had in that presentation, it was kind of distilled down to mariculture. And I did have a slide in the in the front, which is like three parts of that, like the ocean um, real estate, ocean energy, and uh, and mariculture production. Um, so I want to get into all three of those, like. But I think with the mariculture and specifically like a hard rock lease, that would be close by enough where people could come and help out, like build an artificial reef, you know, and that would be like a real tangible project that people, you know, uh, could like kind of rally around a little bit and, you know, then we could sell the rock from that. I mean, I want to do that with the business, but if people want to get involved with the business side of it, you know, and. You know that I, you know, I want to be able to provide like volunteer opportunities as well as like, you know, what other kind of like uh, business opportunities people are interested in. You know. Yeah, totally. And you're you're hitting the nail on the head because now take it to the next level. Take it to the level that you're you want to you want to actually you know build this reef. Let's use the reef as a real tangible example. You want to build this reef with local people that are you know dive certified or whatever you need you know for them to to go and build, I be hiring build. i want to hire reef farmers yeah exactly to, like, make jobs you know for people and they could just go out on, like i have my boat i'm gonna do it first yep but i want to basically like it's going to be bigger than me so uh, there will be it'd be present i'd be potentially like looking for marine biologists yep um I'd be looking for anybody with boating experience or knowledge or just interest in reefs and that kind of thing, like marine interests in general. Like, but um, as far as like skills, it would be marine biology and uh, and like boating. Anybody that that knows how to work on boats or barges specifically. Yeah, I'd like to be able to dump a million pounds of rock. Yeah, and we could just buy it and and ship it, and then people do that all the time. Like, literally, there's a pump. It like we wouldn't have to lift a finger. It's just moving the investor money to the people that will move the rock, uh, you know, they yep. have the barges. Like, I don't, I don't even have to do all that. The sailboat I'm fixing up to mostly like monitor it and like be able to, um, harvest rock from it. Yep. But aside from the dumping of, you know, to get some, there's a bunch of other things, you know, with the way we could build up the reef, but, um, you know, as far as just making it a functional build, you know, business model, I need I need some uh, more recirculating kind of a tanks and stuff. You know, so yeah, some point I might. Yeah, yeah. you're you're yeah. you're 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 saying all the right things in terms of you know, in my mind, 
being able to take all that you're describing and then you know not only are you developing the the um, solution but you're developing a model solution right and that's where the framework allows you to put it you know put all of this stuff specified the way it should be specified so we need we're looking for this particular resource we're looking for people that have boats and why do we need people that have boats well the people that have boats are going to do this process and this process gets broken down to where it's you know a series of these processes and actually you know these processes can be done by doesn't have to be the owner of the boat the, the boat owner can just take people out on their boat so the boat owner can just be somebody you know all they have to necessarily do is just you know use the boat you know the other people could be on the boat doing these other tasks and so you're you're defining everything down to the nano action level so that you're saying you know in the end here's all the very distinct actions that need to be taken here's the specialized skills or resources or whatever that are required for each of these specific actions so you know these actions can only be done by you know a diver these actions can only be done by somebody as a boat these actions can only be done by you know somebody who has finances so whatever it is you're defining all of these things you're putting it all into the framework you're inviting all the other participants to show up and play their role within this whole outline that you've outlined of this solution and then you know as you're doing that then all those other people get to show up and plug themselves in but not only that you know some of them get to show up and say hey well have you talked to so and so or have you looked at this solution because you know they did exactly what you're trying to do and they you know they've already got a whole mapped out business plan oh i can just go ahead and grab their business plan and plug it in here you know there's is all kinds of ways that it evolved once we start to put it in a framework and start to communicate around it and then once you actually create you know results that can be replicatable now well, you those, those results like there are two businesses in Florida that do hard rock Tampa Bay saltwater and uh, like USA saltwater yep um, USA saltwater I I met with the guy and I got his business plan. Like he already did it. Yep. You know? And so I wanted to do so much more, but he was relatively successful with sort of like this baseline thing. Like it's it certainly like I've seen farther because I stood on the shoulders of those who've been there before. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, so at least you know, I have those tangible examples for anybody that's like, well, this sounds a little crazy. No, they've already done it. Here's where they went. You know, here's the website. We just, you know, I'm going to do all that stuff probably because I would like to have it packaged so nicely that like, oh, just show up here, you guys, you know, yep. and um, some of that like other details, um, you know, but the other thing is if I'm just running – you know, Blue Revolution Channel, there's a bunch of other, like, uh, activities that I could provide for people. Like, there's a bunch of other groups. There's Vaughn. Um, they pronounce it differently. It's spelled Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm butchering it. But they're doing great work. There's the, um, there's a whole bunch. There's a, I'm not even going to get into it. It's just um, a bunch of, of marine interested groups yep. that go out and do reef cleanups they hunt invasive like like uh lionfish yep. you know there's all kinds of uh stuff that's that's happening there's the artificial reef projects by the um thomas garrow he does the bio re bio rock uh where you and i used to do research on this but a big thing that it got me into ocean engineering in general was this technology of accreting calcium carbonate directly from seawater and he was able to use this bio rock accretion process it's um a little bit like galvanic protection you know uh you just electrify you know a an anode right mm -hmm. um and a cathode it's it's a it's a it's a galvanic cell like a battery essentially but you end up accreting calcium carbonate out of seawater and there's you know 
details to all of that. But Wolf Hilbert, uh, Professor Wolf Hilbert's University of Texas, I think it was, he's like well published on all this stuff. And he used to work with Thomas Grow and they've gone all over the world. But they did a, uh, they did a project, I think now, only in the last couple of years here in uh, Florida. And Bonet was working with them to do the uh, energy buoy to supply energy to the the bio rock reef. Yeah, you know everything. Everything you're describing is perfect, and you described it in perfect terms because, like you just said, you know you're able to see further because you're standing on the shoulders of others. So you are somebody that other people are going to stand on the shoulders of because you've already done all the work to know all of these experts and assimilate all this information. And now what there is for us to do as a society is to do a data dump from your brain into this framework so that all of this information exists within all of these channels. And it's not, you know, somebody doesn't have to talk to you to learn all of this and understand all this. They can just tune into the channel. And same thing with you. You're going to be able to go further because you're going to learn all this stuff from all these people. So so you're totally tuning right into where we're at with all of this. And again, not that you have to take this approach that you're going to, you know, help populate channels or, you know, talk to different businesses or nonprofits that you think might be interested in collectively collaborating. But these are all options within this whole you know, system that we're developing. We're, we're all about, you know, creating collective strategic solutions to maximize the efficiency and the fe- effectiveness of the use of our resources across the issues that we're addressing, right? So really... I think, it, yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of resources that I am thinking of to potentially, you know, provide. Um, I'm just thinking uh, where to put everything. Like, where is our... I, I like Google... You know, I like to just stick to Google. You know, I, I trust the overlords. Um, <laughs> well, what you're uh, what you're describing again is what um, I'm going to say that I'm not going to provide the answer to. What what we're going to do as an organization is we're going to you know figure out what the best practices are. Like you have certain ideas, I have certain ideas, other have certain ideas. Like, where do we find the experts that have been really digging into this, you know, for years and decades that have, you know, some of the top solutions on the planet of how we manage this across all of society? Like, we've got to find... I've been doing some research on that. And Great. there is, like I mentioned before in our first meeting about Agile as a yep. project management framework and, yep. like, sprints and everything, and how I really like that as yep. a framework. Um so I do recommend checking it out, as well as um, there's a software, a free software available called Jira that allows you to do project management um, with an Agile framework. And if you're less um, detail-oriented or, like, you just have less needs um, in the framework, like, for something so structured, is uh, there's another software called Trello, which is apparently like a little bit more like base level user friendly. Um, yeah, I've used Trello. So let me make sure I'm getting right. the same company that puts out Jira. Okay, so Jira is a project management software that, is that what you said? What is, tell me the relationship between Jira and Agile again. Jira apparently uses an Agile framework. Um, you know, so... You can manage projects with an Agile framework using Jira. This is sort of designed for that, yeah. as I understand it. You know, yeah. I haven't used it extensively, but I've watched videos and like tutorials and stuff. And uh, you know, I've been, especially since we talked the other time, I've been thinking about that problem of what, you know, just seeing what's out there, what's the best out there, yeah. and what's available. And um, so, Jira and Trello just kept coming up. And um, the fact that they were used, that the Jira was using the Agile framework, made you know, me piqued my interest in it. So that's yeah. why I'm sharing it with you. That's really great. The um, uh, do you remember um, Vince Bolito? I think you guys connected in uh, Energetic Planet or Higher Vibe Definitely Life. Definitely Vince. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I remember him. Okay, Big cool. Smile. Yes. Yes. Um, he may he may be joining us. He's he's having conversations with his team about that right now. So he mentioned some other similar platforms. He mentioned um, Miro, I believe it's called M I R O. Are you familiar with that one? 
No, I'm not really a project management guru. I would think Vince would be a good guy to talk to about that stuff, though. So Yeah, uh, yeah. he was mentioning Miro, and he was showing me some of what it looked like. And he may actually, if he comes on board, um, he may actually um, help lead us through some of the different processes within our leadership council meetings or other outside meetings or processes to use some of these systems to do sort some of these things so exactly what you're talking well, i think is the biggest issue now is just protocol right if you have a, like we've described you've described it i i like have, you know been thinking about those kinds of things i mean it's all sort of been solved i think corporations in general have done a lot of work like to build up tools and frameworks for protocol for for people organizing and making you know organizational structures um and you know so there's just a lot of experience out there that we can leverage exactly yeah you're that's that's the thing you're hitting the nail on the head is i don't want to be in the business of reinventing the wheel i don't want to be in the business of me trying to study things and learning things we have to, you know, I'm going to keep reminding you because I have to keep reminding myself and everybody else, you know, this whole enterprise has been um, limited for a long time based on my personal throughput. And we're doing everything we can now, especially with the Leadership Council, to pull, you know, Jared and Jared's throughput out of the process. So, you know, it's not even a matter of like you telling me and like trying to convince me so I do something. It's more a matter of like, convening the proper team of experts to come to some, you know, best use practice solution for us to go forward with until there's a better one, you know, and for us to just keep doing this collective process of learning around everything we need to learn and do until, you know, the next better idea shows up and then we, you know, evolve to that. So that's kind of the way that I see it is I'm totally on board with everything that you're saying. And it's not, it's not me even to keep sharing this with. It's just you're holding the space for those things right now. You're like the first person on the protocol team, if you want to put it that way. And then you're going to, you know, as other people keep showing up and joining the protocol team, you know, soon we'll have enough, you know, people and ideas and decisions or whatever to come to a conclusion to, you know, go forward with what, we, what is the best at the moment. You know, and we keep using the best at the moment until we learn at some point that there's actually something better and then we go with that. So it's just going to be that constant evolution process. And like you're saying, let's, you know, early on in this process, do our best to come up with our, you know, tools. And we've been doing that internally, like ClickUp is the one that the students have found that they think is the best solution. And so that's being tested. So now we have Jira, now we have Miro, now we have ClickUp. You know, we've got these different competing solutions. We need to find, you know, some professors and some experts and some whoever they are that, you know, have been studying all of these things and know what is the best one for our use purpose and why, you know, and, and, and makes us strong. I think like you said, you kind of just have to use at this point, like what works and like we come together with like whatever, is, you know, I mean, you kind of have to just move forward because there will be exactly there exactly will be other softwares you know that come out in the future and you have to be agile you have to yep. be ready to uh just focus on the like for example if this were a agile meeting and we were like describing what it was for the next two weeks what we were going to try and accomplish yeah right yeah um, I would, I'm going to try and make progress with my bow and the business so that we could like do projects like that on, you know, on one side, cause that's like a very personal thing, but in the business, I mean on the, um, like blue channel, like I, I want to use Google's docs and Google sheets and Google forms, you know, Google sites, like to build up content for the blue revolution you already have a site if i were to build some sort of page or something for blue revolution could it link to that could it or, link, could it link to all the google stuff you're talking about 
Well, yeah, because I can publish sites. It's just um, you know the the hosting. You, you, Google does that. You can you can pr- publish Google sites for free. It's just um, you don't have a great like domain name or anything. Well, you, and and the know, other the Google, other part link to it. It's whatever. You know? Yeah, but the other part of it is is that whatever the underlying things are, like you've got all these documents and all those links and all of that sort of thing, and in that in that site framework, we don't have all of those things in a, in a queryable database across our full database of all of the things we're collecting like that, right? So I think we do have to have more of a centralized data collection structure. Um, I'm not saying that we can't use Google Sites or some of the things that you're talking about, it's just well, Google Drive is just very shareable. Well, so we that, use like, we use that we use that for the for the whole team. We're using that internally. But again, right. the conversation that you and I are having right now, I have to remove myself from it because there's way too many of these types of conversations for me to keep being a part of them. For me to be, I'll just be in another bottleneck. Like like I hear what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's that's in the weeks. Don't even let's move on. Yeah, it's like it's like perfect that you're establishing that. You're establishing that. Once Vince shows up, then there will be two of you, and then Emilia, Emiliano will say, "I'm into this too." And you know, again, we'll grow out the team of people that are aligning around a certain thing because they're all tuning into that same channel together. And then when they're all tuning into that same channel together, they can start to create solutions together, and that's our process. Do you have like Slack channels, or what are you using? What are your channels? Right now, it's 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 more conceptual. Right now, you know, we've done just a little bit of um, tagging. Why not use Slack or something? Like, what are you using? Who do I? How do I get on? That's what I mean. It just keeps going back to that. I think so. I I I want to remove myself too. I don't, I I feel like it just I fell back in. Um, well, right now, right now, the technology that we're using is very rudimentary and not functional. So right now, you know, next time. We're on uh, Zoom together. I'll just walk you through the, the, I mean, it's almost silly looking front end, but I've built a database, a relational database in Access, you know, that has tags for different experts, tags for different articles, tags for different whatever. And then the channel is simply, you know, that tag. So when you click on that tag, now you're on that channel and now you see all the different stakeholders that have been tagged for that channel. So that's what it exists like right now. And I do think that we're going to have to, again, have some sort of proprietary build out of the database structure or the, at least the front end. We can eventually open source the data itself for the whole world to be able to have access to the raw data. But, you know, at the moment, it seems like we have to build the database structure and we have to build an interface to that structure. But I'm not attached to that. I'm open to all solutions, but I don't. I, it, it, it's, I can't be involved in the early parts of those conversations. I need to have experts that are involved in those conversations, and then we can kind of see where we're going with it. Sound good? Okay. If, you know, uh, that sounds good. I'm just going to keep working on my end, I guess, and, and, you know, I'll text you, I guess, here and there. Yeah, um, I think you can model. I think you can model with the Google Sites and with other, you know, ways that you want to that you're collecting information and showing and with that model then we can show that to you know some website programmers or to some other people or whatever so that we can go from you know just a a model that you're showing for functionality purposes to the more mature you know Jira or Trello or Miro or whatever it's going to be but you know right now like you just said it's it's the most useful thing is just to get the ball rolling and to show stuff to show stuff so that we can get further along in the evolution, right? It's more of like a ready fire aim process for us now, right? Like let's email list, email list. That's the best way, right? If we have a, a mad email chain, you know, everybody's got email. If you're trying to send something out there, I don't want to get too chaotic. Well, I, that's what I was just going to say. Is like I don't know that everyone's going to be into just an open flow of information in their email, and they're going to think that that's the most efficient way for them to be involved. So there's a lot of considerations, but you're you're hitting at the core of all of them. And 
if you feel like, you know, some of those need to be answered sooner rather than later, then, you know, what there is to do for you is to find, you know, the other experts and the other stakeholders that are going to be a part of developing that solution. Because it's, it's again, this is a... If you're already, I, I hear you, I hear you. And the only reason I, I want to, I just want to be able to move on. And I think what I'm going to do is just use Google as a default. That's what I was kind of saying before, yeah. like... Google has so many options yeah. that, you know, until we find a better solution, if Google has the solution, like, yeah. for whatever, then just go to that because then it keeps it all um, a little more bundled, you know? That's, to um, that's totally fine. Drive, like, huh? Yeah, that's totally fine because then, again, you can share all of that with somebody and then if somebody has a better solution, they can show up and they can say why but at least we've got some solution and we're showing a functional solution. So that's perfect. All right. So I'll send you whatever I come up with. Um, and uh, maybe you'll send out the flare and, and, you know, maybe whoever you have is, is will show up or something. Uh, you said there's a meeting coming up soon. When's the next meeting? Yeah, it's a week from, or I'm not, I'm not even a week from now. It's this coming Thursday, the, 20, the 18th, the week from yesterday, Thursday, the 18th from eight to nine 30 PM Eastern. Oh, on Zoom. Hmm? All on Zoom, right? Yes, it's on the same Zoom link that you've got already. Yep. Alrighty. Awesome, bro. So, yeah, and we'll have, um, you know, more stuff will be shared before Thursday, kind of connecting people, but I think that that's a perfect start because whatever you can do, especially before Thursday, you know, if, if you get things done before Thursday, you know, you can have a minute or two to, to share what you've done or maybe even more, depending on how much you get done, to, to share with everybody as an example and give some real tangibility to, you know, what we're talking about. Sounds good. You can lead the way, man. You're the man. <laughs> All righty. Sounds good. I, uh, I'll see what I can put together. Awesome. I really appreciate it, Dylan. I really appreciate the, the interest and the inspiration and, you know, the initiative that you're taking to go beyond the conceptualness of it and really create some tangible solutions so we can be really making a difference. So that's what we need. So I really appreciate what you're doing with all of that. It's really great. All righty. Awesome, bro. Uh, all righty. Well, uh, Next time, I'm going to send you a message. It'll be, you know, here soon, probably this weekend. I'll work on it. And, uh, you know, early next week, we can, you can get, we'll get back and you can see what I've got. Perfect. Um, okay. Yeah, that sounds I'm great. I'm ambitious right now, but we'll see. <laughs> I'm also a pretty busy man. I understand. I understand. It's awesome. Whatever we do, it's perfect. I appreciate you pushing us forward. All right. It sounds good, Jared. Um, all right, keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. You too, bro. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Talk soon. Okay, bye.